Today we're leaving Kyoto, Osaka area and uh, jumping on a train heading to Kanazawa. Another day, another train. We're just jumping on the metro uh, to head to Osaka Station and then we're going to Kanazawa. I have to say, I'm excited to be going somewhere new, but I feel like we really only scratched the surface of Kyoto area. I, I normally don't take a ton of photos. I normally take like, I don't know, 10, 20 a day at most. In Kyoto, I was shooting so many photos because everything's just so photogenic here. So I'll need to come back here next year at some point or whatever, but I'm sad to leave but excited for a new destination. Have all your belongings with you when you get off the train. Okay, we made it to Kanazawa Station and uh, it's raining outside. And the forecast is that the rain's gonna actually get worse. So I think I'm gonna head to the hotel and do a QA. A QA about travel. And then and then uh, maybe go out for some dinner in the old town here. This is cool. We are in Kanazawa and where we're staying is a traditional house and I actually just booked it on the internet, like on a booking website like I always do. And it turns out that this house is over 200 years old. It was built during the Edo era and that actually this house was once occupied and owned by a samurai. How cool is that? So I'm in this traditional house in Japan wearing the most traditional shirt ever and um, I'm gonna do a Q&A. It seems like the perfect setting for this. So um, this is very impromptu, impromptu Q&A. I just realized it was raining um, on the train and I popped um, the question and answer or actually the call for questions into the Facebook group. And if you're not a part of that Facebook group, you should be. In that group, we do photo critiques, we do Instagram sharing, we do photo sharing, um, we do location guide help. We do all sorts of stuff in that group and it's really beneficial if you're a photographer, I think. So go check out that group. Uh, again, super impromptu. I asked for the questions 15 minutes ago and this is what I got. Um, Sue, Sue asks, why won't you come to Australia? And the Australia thing's this like running joke now because for like seven years as I've been traveling, people are always like, okay, you've been a lot of places, when are you coming to Australia? And the answer has always been, it's not my plans. I've never had a project in Australia. And the reality is I never really like, I don't know, there's never really been a massive draw to Australia because maybe I don't know enough about Australia and what there is to see and shoot. So there hasn't been like this pull to take me to Australia. That being said, this coming year, we're gonna try something a little bit new. We're gonna try kind of basing ourselves in regions and really digging deeper into those regions. So for example, we have like two months booked on the Isle of Crete in Greece. So we're going to use that as a bit of a base in the summer and the early fall. Then after that, we're going to be based in South Africa and we're going to use that for a base for two or three months. And then after we might go home for Christmas and stuff like that. And then after that, the plan is Australia. Um, actually, no. The plan is maybe the Philippines for three months. And then after that, the plan is maybe Australia and spend some time in New Zealand as well. So I think it's going to come up. I think it's going to happen, but no guarantees on that. I got nothing against Australia. I really don't think I know enough about it that I have a whole lot of like desire to go right now. But I'm sure that as soon as I start doing my research on places I can go and shoot and explore, 
I'll be stoked for it. Evan asks, have you ever had trouble taking camera your camera bag as carry on a plane because of weight restrictions? Yes, you might remember that Emirates tried to charge me like 500 euros in overages for my camera bag. Um, I've had a couple other times I've had to pay a penalty uh, when I check in, but it, it's like, it's a, it's a risk every single time. For the most part, they're really understanding if it's camera gear. Because when I check in, I can say, hey guys, I've got extra bag baggage on my back, but I don't have my limit in my suitcase, but I don't want to be putting cameras into my suitcase because it's dangerous that it'll get destroyed or whatever. And usually they're totally understanding. So the only time I ever had an issue was with Emirates. But I feel like my kit's getting smaller and smaller. It used to weigh like 17 kilos, my carry-on. Now it's down to like 12, so it's not nearly as bad as it used to be. Any tips on sleeping in your car while traveling? Brian Lackey asked that question. Um, yeah? Just do it. There's lots of places you can't sleep in your car. National parks, lots of provincial parks, state parks in North America. The best place, in my opinion, to sleep in your car in the US or Canada is Walmart parking lots. And it might seem ridiculous, but if you ever go to Walmart in the US, you'll see that there's actually a bunch of campers and like vans parked on the edge of the Walmart. And that's because it's like, it's free parking. And actually Walmart is kind of like encouraging you to park there. I think it's good business for Walmart because when I was doing like a US road trip over a year ago, I basically slept in Walmart to Walmart to Walmart parking lot and every night I would go in there and I'd get my salad for dinner and I would wake up and I'd go inside and get some yogurt for breakfast. So I, I brought them business and it's like an empty parking lot at night anyway so it doesn't cost them anything. And so Walmart parking lots are fantastic. I think I would really do well at the van life. I really think that if I was more organized with my stuff, I could really do the van life. I think I could do the motorhome life actually. I think the motorhome life would really suit me. What's the most challenging thing about traveling as a photographer? Um, the most challenging thing to traveling as a photographer is you're never free of your kit. You always have your gear with you. You always have camera gear on your back. You always have tripods attached to the camera bag. You always have a, a heavier suitcase than everybody else. And it just, it gets heavy. There's times that I'll, I'll not go out with my camera gear because I'm going to like a movie or whatever and I feel totally naked and light. And it's actually a really liberating feeling uh, and almost a strange feeling. I always feel like I've lost something or forgot something. So I think that's the hardest thing. Is there a specific camera gear set that goes with you when you travel or do you pack the same gear all the time? I pack the same gear all the time. I don't have a home base. I don't have a house. I don't have an apartment. I can leave things. So everything I own always comes with me. John asks, when can we go to Antarctica? And this is a dead serious answer. If there's 10 or 12 of you that want to go to Antarctica, I will teach a workshop without taking a single penny of profit in Antarctica with you guys. That's a dead serious offer. I went to Antarctica on my very, very first assignment and it's still the most impressive place I've ever photographed. And I've been dying to get back, but it's super expensive. So if like 10 or 12 of you guys want to go pay a fee that also covers me to go as well, I'll teach the workshop on the boat and in Antarctica for totally free. That's how much I want to go back to Antarctica as well. <laughs> Greg Snell asks, why do I still travel with a Phantom 4? Because, because you're cheap and you keep repairing it instead of just letting it die. I don't, I don't know why anybody travels with a Phantom 4 anymore ever since the Mavic Pro came out, to be honest. The footage does look better, I think, on the Phantom 4, but it, it's barely better. And the Mavic Pro is just such a good drone that's tiny, I don't, I don't understand it. And the controller for the Phantom 4 is almost as big as the drone itself, it's crazy. So ditch that dude, get the Mavic. Are there any places that you will not travel to or places that you won't travel with Jody? That's a really good question. Where won't I travel? I'll travel absolutely anywhere. There's nowhere in the world I wouldn't travel and I think I proved that on my scooter trip down Africa when I was in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Nigeria, and I, I was all over the place on that trip. So I'm, I will go anywhere. So I might boycott regions or countries for certain reasons, but I'll go pretty much anywhere. The one thing I won't do is I won't go to a country on a government assigned project when that government is an oppressor or an occupier. That's something I definitely won't do. As for the question, will I go with Jody or wouldn't I go with Jody? I, I, I don't know, because we haven't had that 
situation arise where we've gone, we've had the option of going somewhere kind of dangerous or sketchy where Jody's around, I, I don't know the answer to that. I know that Jody could totally handle it. I'm just not sure I could handle it. So um, yeah, I guess that's the answer. The last question, because this is getting really long. In your opinion, what is the absolute best bang for your buck travel destination? Thinking of a combo of great accommodations, landscape, people, culture, affordability, Peru. I think that it's gotta be Peru. Peru has epic landscapes, it has mountains, it has coast, it has desert, it has rainforest. The prices are pretty good. The people are very interesting. Lots of culture and, and good portrait opportunities. I don't think that there's anywhere in the world that has as much diversity as Peru. And, and, and also being affordable. I think that's the, the truth. So that's my answer to my boy Ben Ash. Am I wearing Ben's hat? No. I'm not wearing the hat Ben Ash gave me, but um, big shout out to Ben Ash. And thanks for the questions, guys. Now, um, this vlog's not over. We're here in Kanazawa, and the rain's supposed to stop just after sunset, so I think we're gonna walk into the old town and get some dinner. Yeah. Remember in Kyoto, all the crowds, all the people, we're in Kanazawa in the old town right now, and yeah, we're all alone here, um, which would be fantastic if we weren't trying to find a restaurant right now. This place is really, really cool though. We're, uh, I'm really looking forward to exploring tomorrow. Ah, wow, look at this. This is just so cool. And again, we're all alone here, basically. come into this awesome spot that's like a grill essentially and um, we've got warm sake it's cold out it's really cold in Kanazawa so we got warm sake Tyler and I did anyway Tyler says he may have tried sake once but doesn't remember so he's gonna try sake for a second time cheers, cheers. We'll cheers. See, how he, see how he likes it it's like really smooth vodka, is what it tastes like. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's really good actually. I'm used to drinking at home, like when I drink. I don't drink a lot at home, but when I do, it's always those, uh, the vodka shots, and I can't stand the vodka shots, but this is like super smooth. Food was really good. The food in Japan has just been unreal the entire time. Um, Kanazawa looks cool, actually. It's quiet, uh, there's cherry blossoms, there's lanterns. I think this district is actually the Geisha district. There's lots of history here, and it looks like it's gonna be fun. We literally only have tomorrow here. We were gonna go to like this village that I can't remember the name of, but we actually liked it so much when we got here that I think we're just gonna spend the entire day tomorrow exploring Kanazawa. So I guess I'll see you guys there. Peace.